Hi, friends. Welcome to Foggy Oak Fairy Tales, a stories podcast for all ages, where we tell farm stories from real life happenings on Foggy Oak Farm, as well as fantasy tales to spark both learning and imagination. I'm so glad you're here. Hi, friends. This week's story is an adaptation of the English fairy tale, My Own Self, collected and edited in the volume More English Fairy Tales by Joseph Jacobs in 1922. In this story, a young boy finds out that his wish of meeting a fairy might come true, but it might not be wise to try and repeat. Once upon a time and long ago and far away, a mother lived with her little son on the edge of a wild and rocky moor. Their home was tiny and neat, and they worked hard together to keep out the bitter winter winds and snows that swept off the wild moor. The mother also worked hard to secure the house tight each night to keep out the other things that liked to come out in the darkness of the secret swampy hollows and hills of that wild place. For fairies and will-o'-the-wisps and gnomes and other good folk made their homes there too. And while she'd never run afoul of one, neither did she want to take any chances— as they were the only humans who had dared and tried to live there. She was careful to pull the shutters fast against the windows as the sun went down, to bolt the lock across the sturdy door, and to draw curtains over both the windows and door to further block any light or noise that might come from the cabin after sundown. Her son, at six years old, understood that there was wild magic and equally wild magical creatures there, and helped his mother as best he could with those tasks. But secretly, he longed to actually meet one of the magical denizens of the area. The two would have dinner by a cozy fire, tell each other stories, and then the boy's mother would build up the fire so the house would stay warm overnight. At this point, she was ready for bed after a day of hard work, and secretly, she had a strong desire to know nothing of what might go bump in the night. Always before, the boy had gone to bed obediently with his mother, snuggling down with her under their heavy quilt and falling asleep to the sound of her singing him soft lullabies. But this night, for whatever reason, The boy was positively unable to fall asleep. He laid beside his mother as she sang him lullabies, and as she drifted off to sleep herself. And he lay there for a good time more, listening to the wind howl and bang against the cabin. Finally, he gave up on trying to fall asleep and crept out of the bedroom, tiptoeing back into the main room and seating himself with some wooden toys beside the fire. He amused himself so well that he was soon giggling quietly as he played. He was startled when he heard a fluttering, scrabbling noise coming from the chimney. He froze, uncertain what to do. Should he dash back to bed? Hope it was just a bird that had flown into the chimney by mistake? Before he could make a decision on what to do, A tiny fairy girl, smaller than his hand, emerged from the chimney and flew carefully above the flames to land by his side. Her skin was green as the moss that grew by the soggy, swampy areas of the moor, and her hair as purple as a blooming thistle. She wore a shimmering silver dress and a cap made from an upside-down rosebud, so the petals of the bud spanned out around her like a crown. You're making very merry here, she chirped at him, her voice as clear and lovely as a bell. Can I play with you? Oh, oh yes, he exclaimed. I'd like nothing better. What do they call you? He asked, offering her one of his smaller blocks for a seat. She fluttered prettily down onto the block and perched there. Well, they call me my own self she said with a sly look towards the boy. What do they call you? Through his excitement and delight, 
the boy remembered his mother's caution to never give the good folk his real name and to never expect they'd give him theirs either. He assumed my own self was certainly not her real name and decided it was just as good to use that moniker as any other. Just my own self, too, he replied. And the two began to play together, cozy before the fire. With her magic, the fairy girl was able to make marvelous creations out of the ashes from the fire that looked and moved as if they were real. She made trees with gently waving leaves and all manner of animals and fantastical creatures. She made houses and people and children, and they had great fun engaging with them and making stories for them to act out. They played so long and so well that the fire had burned low and ceased to give off enough light or warmth to continue playing comfortably. Looking to help, the little boy fetched a poker and stirred the embers of the fire to encourage them to blaze back to life. He then carefully added another log. But when he placed the log onto the fire, a shower of small sparks burst forth and one landed on the fairy child's tiny foot. Ow, ow, ow! She shrieked so loud and long that the boy clamped his hands over his ears. The terrible wailing grew so loud that it was as if the howling wind outside had joined her, wailing her displeasure to the world. After what felt like an eternity, but was probably only a few moments of this, the boy was able to barely make out the sound of something in the chimney again, over the sound of her shrieks. Terrified of what might come out of the chimney next, the boy dashed out of the room and back to bed, burrowing under the covers with his mother, who, by some magic, was sleeping soundly through it all. He kept just enough of the blanket tented over his head so he could see out into the main room, where a much, much larger version of the tiny fairy was now peering upside down out of the chimney. "'Who is crying so, and what is the matter?' It demanded, its sharp green face and golden eyes fixed on the wailing fairy girl. It's me, my own self, and my foot is on fire. Ow! She wailed. And who has burned your foot? The adult fairy growled. Just my own self, too! She cried. If you did it your own self, why on earth are you making all this fuss? And in a mortal's house, no less, the adult fairy said in an exasperated tone. And then the fairy reached out and snatched the little girl in one of its long-fingered hands and pulled her back up the chimney and out of sight. The boy laid awake for a long time, almost until dawn, listening and worrying that the fairies would figure out his trick and come back for him. But no one and nothing else appeared and he eventually fell into a sound sleep. While he had enjoyed playing with the fantastical little fairy girl, that night had been enough of a jolt for him for a good long while. From the next evening on, he went right to bed and stayed there when his mother called him, thinking to himself that if he stayed up and a fairy came to play again, he might not get off so easily this time. So much for Just My Own Self too. The End Remember, you're part of the story too. What did you think of this story? What did you imagine when you were listening? We'd love to hear your part of the story. If you and your grown-up want, you can share your thoughts or a picture you drew with our Foggy Oak podcast family. You might find it easiest to share with us on Facebook, at Foggy Oak Farm. But we have lots of options on our website, foggyoakfairytales.com. You can also check out pictures from the farm and learn more about us. Thanks for being part of the story, and I hope you'll join us next week. <laughs>